Hi everyone, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, I am going to do a palette knife and brush artwork tonight. It's um, the first cool day I've had in a long time and the rest of the week's going to be 40 degrees. So, it's the only chance I've got to actually do this before it gets hot again. So, I am going to do um, purples and reds this time. So... I have Deco Art Americana Decor Texture in Plum and Zinc, which is um, a silvery, a dark silver, and Liquitex Basics Dioxazine Purple. So that's going to be more purpley side. And then I have Cadmium Red Hue, and I've got Montmartre Dimensions in Pearl Red. Pearl Wine Red and Texture in Brilliant Gold, oh, sorry, Bright Gold. So that will be the ready side. So bits of colour go on either sides, but I try to have one side more and one side more the other. And then I have Mars Black and Holcroft Professional in Titanium White. So that's the colours. So, main thing i got to remember this time is maybe just a little bit less of the black so I don't overdo it. So, just got to try and do this a little bit more. So, even though it looks like a small amount, there's still actually a fair bit there. So, put that up out the way. Now I get my little palette knife, and it's just a matter of kind of just moving this around. Sorry for the scraping noise, but kind of happens when you're doing the palette knife part. Okay. So this type of artwork's a little bit forgiving, um, as it will always look messy at the beginning. Um, it is one of those things that looks quite messy as you kind of looks messy until you start getting close to the end and it starts coming together. So it's one of those um, little bit more unusual types of artwork. <laughs> so now we've got some of the cadmium red. So I'm just going to do little dollops. Four is hopefully enough. Hoping for is enough actually. It's one of those hard ones. You don't want to add too much paint, but you don't want not enough either. So sometimes it takes a little bit of practice. And each time, clean off your little palette knife before you go to the next color. Even if it's in the same range, I find you're still best to um, swap it over. Now, this one. I'm going to have to just dig a little bit and just plonk it down. Kind of doesn't so much matter if it's not exactly in a particular spot.
trying to get these mid areas. You don't want too much blank spots in this mid area. That's really where you need the paint to be. Awesome. So wiping off my knife again. Then I'm going to go dark Cezine purple. And that's gonna go a couple of dollops down this lower end. Always just add a little bit into the other half, just so it's not completely one or the other. I think I might actually add a little bit more of that, right there, and maybe a tiny bit over here. It's kind of disappeared a little bit, that purple. So because it's been very warm, I haven't done one of these in a while and I kind of feel a little bit out of place. Come on, drop down. There we go. I love these texture paints. Not always good for every type of artwork, but um, they definitely have their place when you do certain things. And like I said, I know it looks a little bit like a haphazard mess, but it will come together. Well, <laughs> I'm hoping it all comes together. It should do. Every time I've done this, they look like a mess until you get closer to the end. Um, I might actually go a little bit of white now. Not a lot. I just want little bits. This is white is a bit thicker. The white just kind of brings in that little bit of, um, it kind of lightens the piece up a little bit because some of these other colors are a little bit heavy.
that should be alright. Now, we're going to put some gold. So for the moment, I'm putting the gold a little bit more up the top parts. But I'll end up spreading that around from where it is. harder to spread that one actually. It's like it doesn't really want to pick up on the palette knife too much. It's a very nice gold too. It's quite a bright gold. Um, well, it is called bright gold, but it's if you've ever used like 24k gold, um, this one I mustn't have used before because I've still got that lid. It's kind of like a 24k gold, but in a texture form. not coming off the knife. So as you can see, it's it's thick, this texture paint. Uh, that should be enough. Did not quite come onto the canvas as planned, but um, it doesn't matter. We'll just mess around and have some fun. Like I said, it should all come together in the end. And if not, it doesn't matter, I've had fun. That is really what art is about, is enjoying yourself. I try not to overcomplicate things at times. I just do what I enjoy. I think that might be about it, paint-wise. So, this is gonna be the challenging part because it actually might be warmer than I would like. So these might get a little bit gluggy, which is not my plan. So then you just get your brush. So you try to just make sure there's a lot of paint in that midsection, then you get your brush and you don't want to grab the darkest part first. You kind of want to... I don't want to go for that red part there either. 
So you just kind of want to get it and drag it. In a bit more. Probably should do this part while I can. See how I'm just kind of doing strokes up and down and trying to get different sections but more blending than anything and you get some bits higher some bits lower and you kind of always come back to like a focal point so you kind of always going into one area drying quicker than I had planned. So when the paints start drying, <clears throat> they just get a little bit thick on your brush and it's harder to move it around and manipulate it a little bit. If you feel like some bits are a little bit heavy with just one line, kind of go back and blend it a little bit more. So I'm just going to do a little bit more up here. Trying to get that paint off the edge without messing it up a little bit. Okay, so now I've got to here, I might do just a little bit more over this side. Go in a little bit further. What I'm probably going to do now is swap brushes because this is a very purpley brush. Now I want to swap to this brush, which is going to give me more of the reds and silvers. I mean reds and golds. So I'm going to come up to this section and grab those reds. And you just do decent strokes back and forth. Coming in deep in some sections. So by coming in deeper in certain sections, you're kind of getting a pattern. So you've got to try to kind of plan a little bit of a pattern in this midsection. So I'm going to come in deep, grab some more paint. Then come back out. And then come in deep again. So it is coming out relatively dark. A lot of that gold is not streaking out as easily. It's kind of getting overshadowed by the other colours. Might be able to grab a little bit. There we go. Grab a little bit of that golden red. Just kind of pull it out to the edge. So over here it looks a little bit thick. So I'm just going to blend this a little bit more. That was where my brush had a little bit too much paint on it. Um, 
how am I going? So you just got to make sure there's no bare canvas. So if there's any spots like that little spot right there, I want to pull that out. So there was a bit of a bare spot in there. I think I'm actually done with how I'm... I don't want to go in too much more. Otherwise, I'm making it not so much of the focal pattern and more streaks when you kind of want those peaks to happen in spots. Yeah, so I'm going to leave that as that is now. And now what I've got is I've got white. That's quite thin. And I've got a toothbrush. I was using a brush before, but um, it wasn't giving me the right results. So I'm going to put a glove on because I'm going to get real messy now. I should only need one glove, so I'm just going to dip the tip of my brush into it. Now that did not flick anything at all. <laughs> See, I get some big bits and some little bits, but it's good. And even some streaks. The good part about this is it actually kind of, it brings it all together. It kind of focalizes and makes it look more blended um, in a way. So I'm going to stop there before I go too crazy. And I should have put two pairs of glove, uh, pair on a glove on each hand. So ultimately, that's kind of finished now. Has turned out darker than I had envisioned in my head. But um, I have noticed it's, it's done that more times than not, where it has come out darker than my original plan was. So do keep that in mind when picking colours. Um, maybe even use less black at the beginning and maybe a little bit more of the white to kind of get different colours. But um, I, I like that painting. So... I'm not disappointed, it's just different to how I had planned in my head. But ultimately, I have a really good selection of colours running through. You can see reds, you can see purples. Um, the silver is really a zinc, which is a dark silver. So that kind of blends in more. And then you've got highlights of gold that are coming through. I probably will use more gold next time because I kind of wanted that more gold look to come through hasn't come through as much in my streaks um, but that's fine really I don't over fuss I think often if your painting is pretty good stick with it if you try and alter a pretty good painting usually you make a pretty bad painting um, some reasons I find trying to fix things I usually make more of a mess than actually fixing it but um, I don't really think this needs fixing it's different to the other one as in colors but I'm loving it and I have gone a little bit more inwards and made that center point a little bit more smaller when some of the other ones out there actually quite more um, I, I haven't done the pulling out as far but again each one you got to you got to do things a little bit different each time and see how it goes and if you don't like it then you just mix it up to a next time but as you can see the colors blend through Definitely got reds and purples. I've got gold. Um, I'm pleased. 
So now it's just a matter of letting this dry. Um, it won't dry virtually any different to how it is now. You will get these raised bits from the texture plank, which is good because even if you use any paint that's got a little bit of thickness to it, it will keep that kind of little bit of a raised level. It shrinks a little bit, but you, you have texture to it, which is the best part. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to bring you down for a close up and let's see what it looks like from my angle. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, oh, I've got a couple of flies just coming in now. As you can see, I've got the streaking going on. I've got reds happening over here, black and then back to red and gold, more dark over here. Um, I'm, I'm really happy. The white has definitely brought it all together by doing the flicking. Um, I might have done a little bit too much in some spots, but I don't really think so. I think once it's dry, it's actually not going to look like a lot. Um, doesn't really look like a lot on camera either, to be quite honest. But here's the center. And those metallics are going to be really super shimmery. You can kind of see a little bit of shimmer in them now, but um, they will be a lot better when they actually are dry and doing their little thing. So ultimately we've got a, a gold. We've got a shimmery red. We've got a zinc, which is a like a dark silver. And we've got a shimmer plum. It's hard to show them properly. And then you've got normal red, purple, white, and black in there too. So more colors, less colors. I probably wouldn't overdo it with tons of colors unless they're in the same range, like three or four different purples and three or four different reds. But um, this fly is going to go on my painting. I can see it. But yeah, all right. So I hope you guys like this. So let me know what you think. So comment, like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Just hit the bell and click all. I'll see you soon for another pour. Okay, bye everyone.